woof. This Raiders injury news is putting us in a really rough spot this week. Week four against the Browns. You might as well throw my week four preview out the window because I was not foreseeing both Max Crosby and Devontae Adams, which you probably heard, are out for this week. Now I'm going to start with Max Crosby because I think there is something we do not know here. There's something they're keeping in-house that they're not releasing to the public. And there's three angles I can look at it from being potential possibilities of what's going on here. But we gotta look at some of the facts too. The fact is, Max Crosby has a high ankle sprain. The fact is, it happened on the second to last play of the game against Baltimore, so he had it at the start of last game. He played the entirety of last game, finished that game, he still has a high ankle sprain. But now this week he's sitting. Hmm. Did it get worse? Did it, they, they didn't cover any of that. So the first option here is that Max Crosby did not make this decision, upstairs did. This was an Antonio Pierce business decision, but not in the way that he insinuated. Not in the threatening, hey, you better get it together, or maybe we'll trade you, or maybe you're gonna get benched kind of thing, fired, whatever. This was the coaches seeing Max's play on the field with this high ankle sprain and saying, okay, we can let this trickle on all season if we keep letting Max play, or we can give him a couple weeks of rest so we can have that 100% Max Crosby on the field that wrecks offenses. I would rather have that for most of the season than you know, just say, we don't wanna have a game without him or a couple games without him, and now he's you know, a lesser form of himself throughout the entirety of the season. Nobody wants that. He's such a dog that it seems likely if anybody made a decision, it was them on this and not him. Now, the other option, the second option here, is there's some information they're withholding, they're keeping just in-house that is not being released to the media or to the public or even the in-house reporters. Um, and yes, that does happen. Uh, if any of y'all remember, you know, or diehard Raider fans remember over a decade ago when I played, started every game my rookie year, you didn't see me for the first 10 weeks of my second season. What's going on here? You know, you might have heard about the knee scope. Yeah, you certainly didn't hear about the second knee scope because they couldn't figure out what the hell was wrong and why after a knee scope I'm not running after three or four weeks like most people. I couldn't even bend the damn thing hard at all, you know, after three or four weeks. And it wasn't something that the coaches wanted to talk about publicly and I certainly didn't want to. And the reporters will try to come up and kind of buddy buddy you and, and then say, hey, you know, just off the record, like what's going on, man, you know? And it's always like, no, not talking about it, not going there, you can talk to the coach about that one. It could be, this is more than a high ankle sprain or uh, maybe it was retweaked and there's some tendons or ligament issues going on here to where they're saying, okay, we, we have to sit him because Max has never missed a game in his life. The fact is Max Crosby is a generational player and I'm not just saying that from the aspect of the tangibles, the intangibles too. And that's a huge piece of it. That's most of it between the years. He's one of the few, one of the very rare people in the NFL that has that old school mentality when it comes to the toughness of this game. He loves and respects the game of football. He knows the history of it. He respects it all. And he has this great ability, the social connection aspect to be able to rally people in the locker room and get them. He's the leader. So he's going to be outside of the head coach, the main guy setting the culture. And you see that happening. You've seen it over the past few years. He's changed the culture of the Raiders and getting them back to that old school, tough grit. And that's another level of being a great player. Even though it's a social thing, he's able to relate and connect and get people on the same wavelength beyond just being great on the field. He also has that aspect of not being satisfied. Like he is not gonna be satisfied. He's going, he's trying to be the greatest of all time and nothing can deter him from that. Even record setting contracts and being generationally set wealth wise for his family history, you know, they handle that right. So. I see it being likely one of these two options that either someone else made the decision for him, which, you know, it's kind of, you can almost kind of argue that maybe that's a hard thing to do because he has so much pull in that organization to say, I'm not sitting. No, absolutely not. Or two that they're saying, yeah, but look at this scan. You can't play through this. Okay. This is, you're done for right now. You, you got to take X amount of weeks off. We're not going to tell anybody about it but you gotta do what we're telling you to do and he, they convinced him to do it. Now, the third option here is that if nothing else is going on 
with that high ankle sprain. Because let me preface this by saying I almost, I don't think there was ever a time in my career I didn't play with an ankle sprain. Yes, there is a big difference between an ankle sprain and a high ankle sprain. A high ankle sprain is much worse, it's much more painful, it's much, has much more swelling, you're much closer to having stretched those ligaments to the point of fully tearing, they're partially torn. I get that, you know, and I played through those and, and sometimes that even looks like hobbling the bare, like you need crutches almost. Coaches don't even make you practice and you tore it all shot it for the game. That was kind honestly, ankle sprains, finger, always had at least three or four finger sprain and, and one or two ankles. Those were the least of my concerns compared to like the pain of having a bone on bone knee and never knowing if I cut, if my muscles are just gonna be jello and not go on me. I don't think it's that, that, that Max changed his mind it has the same high ankle sprain and is now making the decision of like, yeah, I agree, I'm not gonna play this week. I don't see that being the case because he's such a dog. You know, and, and a lot of you might point to, oh, he had Howie Long on his podcast and Howie said, you know, from, from a veteran, you know, alumni's perspective, I kind of handled it the same way as you and I could have had more longevity if, you know, we take some breaks here and there and bring some guys in so you can be in there when it matters most and game time decisions at the end of the games and, and extend your career a little bit. That's better for you, better for the team. And you, you're thinking maybe that kind of tickled on Max's desire to be legendary, to be the best ever and to play longer and, and all those things, and maybe seeing it from that angle. But I doubt it. And that's more just of a gut thing, of just kind of reading the situation, the body language, um, Max's responses. He was very respectful and nodding and saying, yeah, 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 but he never co-signed it. And in fact, he never even addressed it. He kind of just let Howie talk, and then Howie went into a different subject, and it went unaddressed. The other piece is, look who's tatted on his stomach, dude. He's a huge Kobe Bryant fan. He's fully drinking the Kool-Aid the Kool of that Mamba mentality, which is, I mean, it's it's a warrior mindset. It's You're not gonna let a, a, a sprained ankle keep you, you know? So those are some of my thoughts with Max. I mean, dude's on another level, uh, a level I, you know, I never even dreamed of from the physical abilities, but also the intangibles of the the toughness. We're not even you know, what I didn't even mention is Max played through last year a right knee. I can't remember which knee, but a, a knee infection that was threatening not only his career but his life potentially. Those infections, whether it's MRSA or whatever, they start to attack the nervous system. They can shut things down. They can really mess you up, and he played through that. So you're gonna tell me that that guy in one year has now somehow switched to let a, a, an ankle sprain get him. The knee was probably more painful and more threatening to your psyche. So a lot of people don't understand about injuries. Let's talk about that for a second. Sometimes when you see somebody freaking out on the field and they're grabbing their knee and, they're, and they're, you're saying, oh, this guy's soft and blah, they're not freaking out because of the pain of that situation. You've got adrenaline going that really doesn't set in until kind of after the game. You do feel, if you feel pain at all on the field, you know you're gonna be in for it the next day because you know you have adrenaline going. You're not feeling that in the way that's normal in this time that blunts some of the pain. Really what the overreaction is at, at moments is the psyche of what just happened. Shoot, how bad is it? Shoot, is my career over? Oh man, I didn't get to my second contract yet. What does this mean for my future? Is everything I worked for done? Is the only thing I've ever loved out of my hands now? What does it mean? What does it mean? What does it mean? That's the hardest part of realizing that you got injured. It's never the pain. That's the biggest piece. So to have the ability to potentially be one of the greatest, if not the greatest, you know, defender of all time, and that's your greatest goal. And for him to still, you know, face down the end of his career with that that infection and say, no, nah, I'm gonna show up for my team. I can't even process that. I mean, that's another level of toughness that I just freaking love it. I mean, that's that's akin almost to, to Ronnie Lott cutting his finger off in the Super Bowl. It's like, no, 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 you, we're not fixing it. Cut it off, I'm getting back in there. That's that old school stuff right there. I'm telling you, Max is different, dog. He's different. And so there's something going on here. I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure it's not that third one. It's either that somebody else made the decision for him and convinced him it's the right thing to do, 
or there's there's something we don't know about what's really going on with this body y'all weigh in let me know what you think because i'm kind of equally weighted on those front two um so to get to the other stuff demonte's out i mean arguably the best in the league when he's at his best and we can get the ball in his hands that's rough the only silver lining to that is that we saw what we wanted to see out of Trey Tucker last week. J Jacoby Myers had a great game as well. They both had seven receptions. Uh, Trey went for 96 and a, a tutty, and, and Jacoby went for 62 and a, and a tud. Brock Bowers is constantly elevating. He's so incredibly smooth, such an amazing route runner, and he just presents those size matchups that great, smooth, uh, fast, and athletic tight ends present to, to defenses. We're not even scratching the surface with him. He's so young. His hair would indicate otherwise. Somebody get tell that man about some Rogaine. Let's get that full head of hair. Maybe even get some plugs in the offseason. I'd like to have a Bowers with hair on his head. There's, I mean, Bowers is going to be great. Hopefully a Hall of Famer. But how much better would it be for him to receive that at the end of his career? And we want to look at one with, he's got a full head up there. And it's still early, Bowers. Let's let's work on that, pal. There's a lot of options. There's uh, finasteride, which is what the active ingredient in, in Rogaine. And then also you can plug that thing up a little bit. They got a, uh, no, finasteride is the, the is the pill form. And then Rogaine is, dude, you're, you're going to be all right, man. Just hop on it. I'm, I'm serious. You're, once it's once you're bald, it's kind of a little bit too late. And then everyone knows you've got plugs. It's like a Brian Urlacher situation, which is still a whole lot better than having no hair at all. Let's move on. All right. We're also missing Divine Diablo again this week. Um, that hurts. I thought Masterson did pretty well fill, filling in for him. Um, and we got some other guys that I think are going to be chomping at the bit. Um, dropping names right now, but that's okay. Now, who else was going to be out? So our starting right tackle, Mumford, that's, that's a rough one too. So, look, we got a lot of rough rough injuries that put us in a tough spot, but we can't make any excuses, okay? We gotta have guys step up. I think we've proven, you know, in different moments that we've got guys that can step up and uh, fill in the spots that need to be filled in so we can keep this thing running. Um, hopefully, even the mentality of what happened last week and wanting to, to prove that we're better than that, mentally and physically, will be enough to, to override some of these, these injuries. But the other part of it is there's no excuse because the Browns are probably arguably in a worse position um, uh, injury-wise. They got a lot of guys out. So um, these were some of my thoughts. Uh, let, let me know what y'all are thinking down below. Let's, uh, let's start a conversation and let me know what you think about that Max situation. Um, am I completely off? You know, did I, this is just, this is my gut. That's what I think. Uh, having played and, and, and seeing what goes on there and seeing that this man's different. Um, yeah, hit me, hit me below. Raider Nation. Love y'all.